All right, people, I'm back again. Talking about Michelle and David, their story. They don't talk much about it, but it's very quick and to the point. Scattered out over two books. But think about what I was saying. Speaking against God's anointed or feeling some type of way towards God's anointed can cause you to lose your blessing. Or cause you to be punished. Let's go back to the Old Testament. When Miriam and Aaron were bad-mouthing Moses because of who he married, the Ethiopian woman. Mm. Why did you marry somebody of our people? They just talked about him in the back, and the Lord heard it. And the Lord said, hey, go tell Mar Miriam and Aaron to come here. I need to talk to them. Why are you bad-mouthing Moses behind his back? Miriam, leprosy. Psh, seven days out there. God said he has no respect to person. He don't care if he's your mama, your daddy, your brother, your wife. Mm, it don't matter. Mm. When you're going up against God's anointed, you might want to be careful what you're thinking. <laughs> well, how you think. Bring every thought into captivity. Don't let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Let's continue on. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household. He returned to do what? To bless his household. That means his wife included. And Michelle, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king in Israel today? I guess he was being sarcastic, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of a handmaid, a jealous self of his servants, as one of the vain fellows, shamelessly uncover uncovered himself. He wasn't uncovered. He was in an effort. Look it up. An effort is something that covers your whole body. A linen effort covers your whole body. He was just happy and dancing for the Lord. Look at that jealousy, that spiritual energy that transferred from the father to the daughter. Transferred to the third and fourth to the generation of them that hate me. How do you show you hate God sometimes? By hating who he sent to help you. And David said to Michelle, it was before the Lord which chose me. Before thy father and before all his house. To appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than us. And we be base in my own sight. And of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be made in honor. <laughs> Therefore, Michelle, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of the Lord. I mean, day of her death. Wow. God closed her womb. No descendants here. But it makes perfect sense. God was going to destroy all of Saul's ancestry. But Michelle got a second chance to be in the blessing. All she had to do was honor and respect her husband. But she didn't. So who closed her womb up? David? No. The Lord. Jealousy is a, a vicious thing. There are husbands and wives that go through the same thing today. The man jealous of the woman. And I believe a little jealousy is good if you're married. God is a jealous God. So you got to think about this. A little jealousy is good, but not jealousy to the point where you despise your own husband or despise your own wife. <laughs> Why do a lot of marriages don't prosper? Why do a lot of marriages don't last because of this? And the thing is, it's probably something that was passed down from your parents. An entity, a spiritual entity that travels from one generation to the next because of disobedience. But you can break those curses. You just got to not be like your parents. 
not be like your fathers and your mothers. Mm. Return to the Lord and we'll return to you. I'm like, man, you had it set. But maybe the fact that her father was dead, her brothers were dead, he took her from her husband, but she loved David at one point in time. Mm. What happened to that love? Jealousy overrided it. I don't even know why God wanted me to talk about this story, but I was riding back home yesterday. Actually, when I did the video yesterday, I, I finished, I got off of it. I was like, man, I'm going to talk about this. And the Lord said, wait. And then this morning, he brought it back to remembrance. Mm -hmm. Talk about this today. Jealousy is a uh, horrible thing. You know, and the thing is, people, I can relate this to my story. Check this out. And I'm going to be real with you. Guess what my wife's name is? Michelle. And when we first met, I could tell she loved me. She cared for me. And I tried to start making music before. When we Before we stayed in the house we are right now. And I remember I used to try to make music. And she hated the fact. Oh, what are you doing? It's like some kind of spiritual energy was messing with her. Like I was up to no good or something. Even when we came here, as long as she's singing or making music, we made great music together. Glory be to God. But let me step up and start rapping or singing. It's like it's a different person comes over her. Like a jealousy spirit. Because I'd be like, you know I'm writing a song, both of us are going to be in here. I'm like, but she'll sing, try to sing through the whole song. I'm like, good Lord, have mercy Jesus. And another thing my wife would do is bad mouth me to everybody. He said, a, a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman destroys it with her own hands. All with her own mouth. <laughs> How can you bad mouth your husband to somebody else? How can you bad wife your mouth your wife to somebody else? Hmm. It's weird, ain't it? But it is what it is. And yeah, she left. I remember she left on a Sunday. We had just came from church. And I'm like, why? But I remember what I prayed for. And I remember asking other people to pray for me and that happened. That's why yesterday I was talking about you need to be optimistic about certain things in your life. You got to realize what God is doing. Now think about what something the Bible says. He said, if the Lord is for me, who can be against me? Now, that who can be against me applies to anybody. If the Lord is for you, if the Lord favors you, and anybody is trying to disrupt his plan for your life, he will remove Take Michelle. He removed her. Now take David's disobedience with Uriah and his wife. And he how he slept with her and had a baby by her and this and that and sent him out to be killed. But one thing God did do in that situation, he created a he took one child and blessed her with another. And David, another, a child by the name of Solomon. So if you look at the, the real truth of the matter, I don't know this for a fact, but it looks like a good theory. Maybe Uriah was going to die in battlefield anyway. And it would have been right in the eyes of the Lord. Because what did David, what did God tell David? He said, haven't I given you the Wives of your enemies? I would have given you such and such more if you would have just stayed the course and not take matters in your own hands. Uriah, why? Uriah probably would have died and he probably would have got it anyway. And he wouldn't have had strife in his house for the rest of his life. I don't know for a fact, but he blessed it because he gave her another son. A son that actually became king. But you can look at the spiritual energy, the transference too. He was good for a while, Solomon was, but in his old age, he turned from God. Maybe that little deception 
You let a little spiritual entity float in through them. Mm. You see, that's why God wants you to be obedient, do well. Don't reward evil for evil. And you can ruin your blessings. You can ruin your purpose, the plan he has for you through jealousy. You know, I love my wife and I know she loves me. But maybe she loves out there more. Mm, I don't know. I try to ask no questions so I can be told no lies. You know, ain't nothing worse than a person you love and care about to wrong you or to ridicule you while you're doing something great. He's dancing for the Lord. But I think over the years and over the battles and when she was bonded with the other man, it kind of messed her heart up. You know, I know she loved her family. And a lot of people love their family. You know who my wife ran back to? Her family. He said, when you be married, you leave from your father's and mother's house, you become, become one with your wife or with your husband. Why do so many people run to their family members away from their God-appointed husband or wife, which is against God? And you see it all the time. They run and tell that. Destroying their own marriage. You can just run and talk to the Lord. Be better. Because think about it. That same jealousy. Like I, what is the saying I say all the time? Misery loves company. And I, I know my wife's family. I know how they operate. I know a lot of them are lonely. I know a lot of them are single. A lot of them like to party. A lot of them like to leave their husbands or their wives. And go hang out with family. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I know that. But I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to put pieces together. And I'm trying to warn y'all of the same thing that I go through. I don't want you to experience what I go through. I don't. But some things you're going to experience. Because you got to think about it. If somebody disrupting your purpose, God's not going to let them hang around. It don't matter who they are. It don't matter who they are. And you just got to accept it. Now you understand what I'm talking about. Optimistic. You have to accept what he allows to happen. Because if he didn't want her gone, she would still be here. If certain people in your life, if he didn't want them gone, they'll still be by your side. You know, you know, you never hear about Michelle anymore. Her story stops right there. And you know, a lot of people in your life story are going to stop. In regards to your life. When they leave. Mm -hmm. All they're going to get to do is watch. As God lifts you up. And think. I could have been there. They're going to make up all kinds of excuses. Well, you don't know. Her or him, like I knew him or her. They're going to steal bad mouth you. You ever watch the movie The Temptations? The five part story? I mean, whatever how long it was, but the story of The Temptations, they were a group who grew up singing a cappella on the street corners. And I remember a woman, a woman in the movie, she took a liking to them. And she signed them. She made them record. And they was doing good. I remember this. And the guys was like, man, we got to make more money. We can't just. She was like, this ain't your card. And she, she fired them. She got rid of them. She got rid of the Temptations. One of the most famous groups. Well known throughout the world. And when they see success, they flash back to her sitting in her basement studio. We're smoking a cigarette with hair rollers on her head, looking depressed and like shaking her head. All she can do is like, I messed up. And you know, there's a lot of people in your life are going to look back and be like, I messed up. And you know, a lot of us who I'm talking to are going to look back and be like, I messed up. And there's nothing you can do about it. You miss your train. You missed the things that God had prepared for you 
because of your rebellion, your jealousy, or this and that. Don't fall in that category, people. I was watching the, the movie of the, about Exodus. I, I want to watch the one on Netflix right now. But it's some, it's certain movies, I'm like, I can just tell they messed it up. I won't even watch it yet. I might watch it this weekend or wake and watch it whenever God put it on my mind to do so. But it's on Netflix. It's like a three-part series about the Exodus. And I just, Hollywood just loves to destroy the truth. And I hate, I'm going to say this now. I hate how Hollywood whitewashes everything. How they make everybody white. Not that I'm racist or anything like that. But I could have sworn that was the Middle East over there. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I just hate that. It ain't even about color, but if you're going to do a movie, be accurate. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I hate that. I hate that. And that sometimes moves me away from even watching many things. I won't even watch The Chosen because I see they add little bits and pieces in there. I won't watch it. I'm like, nope. I'm not watching that. But think about it, man. Jealousy, the first murder ever committed on this earth. Cain slaying Abel. Why was it? Jealousy. Jealousy is one of the most dangerous sins known to man. Jealousy leads to anything. I remember something my mom used to tell me back in the day. If they lie, they'll steal. If they steal, they'll kill. Now I get to what that means. One sin always leads to another sin. Let's think about somebody who commits adultery. They committed adultery. Now they don't want their husband or their wife to know. Now they got to lie about it. Thou should not buy false witness. Now they got to lie. Now you got to start being deceptive to cover up your own tracks. You see, that's why God tells you to go your way and sin no more. And mostly sin starts from where? Drinking a beer? Smoking a cigarette, smoking some weed, doing some crack. That's what sin starts. No, sin starts from your heart. It's something that's in there. As a man thinketh, so shall it be. It starts here. People convince themselves to do all types of evil things and evil matters. It starts here. The act of adultery starts here. The act of lying starts here. Here. In your heart. That's why you're trying to get your heart right with God. So you don't want to miss out on your blessings. Do you? I don't. You know, I, I, me personally, I want to bring as many people along for the ride as I can. But I'm starting to realize, people, everybody's not going to go along for the ride of your life. No matter how much you want it. And the thing is, what they say, if you love someone, let them go. Or let them be. Or something like that. If they return, it was meant to be something like that. That don't mean everybody who God removes from your life is going to stay gone. Some people are going to come back. Some people are going to realize. And that's just, sometimes you might let them back in. Sometimes you ain't. You know, but guess what? He said, what's in Psalm 23? I prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. He said, only... Only with your eyes will see the reward of the wicked. So the thing is, you don't want to be the wicked. You don't want to be looking on somebody who God has favored. And like, you're the one on the outside looking in. And you don't, you don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person. I don't want none of y'all to be that person. I don't want y'all to be left out. Look back at your family. Look at back at the pattern. And see if you're falling in that same pattern. Whatever it may be. You know, God is good, people. And it's his good pleasure to give you the what? The kingdom. A lot of people is not going to reach the kingdom because of jealousy, bitterness, envy, lust, disobedience, this and that. He said a man that pleases to the Lord would escape certain type of women and certain type of men. Maybe God not... God pushing Michelle away early. Stop that from coming to bite him in the butt later. Having that child and her spreading, you know, your granddaddy. 
spreading the lies in the seat, spreading that generational curse. You know, that's why a lot of people don't give a, get over witchcraft and things of such. Let me pause. I'm still talking. I want to stop, but I've got to talk to some more people. Let me pause for a second.